to the game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My name is Rick Scooby, Warren Henderson, Nick Billmeyer. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about pitching, different types of pitches, deliveries, and then we'll open it up to questions and then we'll get you rocking and firing here. Uh, anybody that wants to get up there. Uh, four seam fastball. You got the horseshoe here on a baseball. Cross that horseshoe. It's a four seam fastball. You hear Harry and all our announcers talk about a good sinker. These two stripes here, two seam, two uh, fingers across there. Right handed, it's going to come off this finger here, and it's going to go down to my right side. Left handed, it's going to come off this way, go down to my left side. Curve balls in the horseshoe again, middle finger on top of the seam. A lot of our guys spike this finger to get it out of the way. It allows us to throw it a little harder, a little firmer, tighten the rotation to it. Curve ball is more of a break like this. The slider, which a lot of guys will grip some here, some go this way, all right? some will even get over this way. Uh, slider is going to be harder, and the break itself is going to be kind of two planes. Okay, it's going to go this plane across and also downward. The curveball is going to be more downward and a little softer, less velocity too. Change up wise, uh, circle change, making the circle right there. Some guys three fingered, almost like a pitchfork. Uh, some guys with a split finger, where they spread their fingers this way. Some guys with an actual fork ball or a deeper split where they get the ball in there and get like that. Uh, Freddie Garcia, I told the other ladies, Freddie Garcia was here last year. Freddie's one guy, and most guys that learn to throw the split, they take a softball <coughs> and they start stretching their fingers. And Freddie could get a softball right in the center of the softball. Wow. He'd get his fingers like that. A lot of good did him. <laughs> but he did it, did it one time before he got hurt. You know, unfortunately, Freddie was hurt last year. It wasn't the real Freddie Garcia we'd hoped to see. Um, but for a long time, it made Freddie a lot of money and a pretty good pitcher. Uh, delivery wise, wind up, here I am over the rubber, two feet, small rocker step, a pivot, a lift, stride to it home, and come off my backside, which is my power source. Stride straight to it home, knee, hip, shoulder, right in line with my target. My head stays nice and still inside my front shoulder. Okay? Uh, you want to stride here, you don't want to get across this way where I'm throwing. My body's going this way, I'm trying to throw back to home plate. I don't want to get way over here where I'm headed this way, I'm trying to throw toward home plate. Um, stretch. Come sit. Just the same lift, the same stride, the same direction to home plate. Uh, head wise, for me, is vitally important. You watch good pitches, your head's always still. Head is always in the center of the body. If here I am in my wind up, my head's always going to be in the center of my body. Centered, and centered, and centered, and you finish centered. You watch Maddox, Glavin, those smolts, their head's always nice and quiet, nice and still. You got sons, daughters that play other sports, shooting basketball. Taller pitches, to a degree if they can stay upright, but guys like, guys that get 6'6 six, six and above have a tough time controlling the body. They're so lanky that it's tough for them to keep all the pieces together. But yeah, if you can be as tall a person as possible, they can stay tall and create that angle. Uh, Chris Young with uh, San Diego. But he's now he's a high fastball guy that only throws 88 to 90, but guys don't get real good swings at him because it comes out of nowhere and is on top of us. Yes. Anything? How about blisters? How do, they, about? how do you prevent from getting the blisters on the pitchers? Well, hopefully you build enough callus and throw them. But uh, some guys, nails are vitally important. That's one thing. Guys cut their nails too short. They cut them real short and they get the, they get a lot of pressure and a lot of heat underneath there, right in the corner, and that's how they get the blisters. Myers had one a couple starts ago. You look at his fingernails and they're cut down to the cuticle somewhere here. So we try to keep the, you know, the fingernails at a nice length where we don't get pressure up underneath them. Um, when you get them, we try to drain them as fast as possible. Use new skin, uh, use a number of different products to try to get the heal as fast as possible. Yes? It's not a ball. Another ball. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Quite often. Okay. Here we are again. Alright. The rule says, there's a number of different types of box, okay? First of all, the rule says that as a pitcher, I have to come to a complete stop before I can deliver the ball from the stretch. 
So if I'm here with my hands still moving, 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 and pinch, that's a bop. My hands have to come stop mm -hmm. somewhere, posing for a full stop or a second. Come set, now I can pinch. Okay, that's one bop that don't stop the hands. One that's called quite a bit, and one that's quite obvious, really. You'll see a guy looking in for a sign. And he might shake, and then he goes, yeah, and he starts up, and he sit, comes back down. Can't do that. Once I start any type of movement, it's got to be continuous. So once I get a sign, if I go like this, that's fine. If I get a sign, and I go like this, and then back down, and like that, that's a bop. Um, Right-handed wise, the rule book says I have to gain distance and direction with my front foot. It's thrown to first base. My front foot has to clear where my heel comes set. I cannot go like this and throw it first because I've gained no distance to first base. I have to be able to make a step to it first, over that line like that, toward first base with direction and distance. I can't come like this, go here and throw because I'm not stepping toward first base. So that'd be an obvious one. Left-handed one is the toughest one because there's an imaginary. For whatever reason, I don't know why we just don't put a white line down on the mound. Because it's all judgmental, according to an umpire, with that 45 mark, 45 foot mark. Okay? But there's an imaginary 45 foot mark that says I have to step inside that to go to the first base. So if I'm left handed and I come here and go there, that's fine. If I come here, go toward home and throw, that's a ball. Um, the other one, left-handed wise, is if my right foot crosses the plane of the rubber when I lift it, if I go like this and it crosses past the rubber, I have to pitch. I can't cross over this way and then go back to first base. Once this foot crosses, I have to go to home. The thing I can do is my knee can cross there and go in either direction. So if I'm good enough and it's part of my delivery that I go my knee here, I can go here, here, there, and no problem. But it's off the foot. That can't go there and then back over there. Um, the other one, probably, if you don't see much, this is bent, bent front knee where a guy with a receiver runner, what he'll do is just bend his knee that way, give him a quick jerk and throw over. That's a ball because you're deceiving the runner. You're deceiving the runner. The most, most obvious one is the one where we, we think we got a sign and we're not sure, and then we start up and stop. We can't do that. 